I'm Fred Burton. One of the things that have come out of this Times Square bombing case is the FBI losing the surveillance of the suspect as he fled to the airport. What most people don't understand is the complexity and the sheer volume of resources it takes to surveil a suspect from any location. I want to show you uh, the complexity what, of what it takes to deploy a team around a typical townhouse. For example, if you take this as your house, and you've got a front door here, and a back door, and perhaps a garage. There's a couple different formations you're going to deploy out. One is called a box, where you're going to put surveillance assets, FBI agents, surveillance teams out, to cover all contingencies in case the suspect leaves via this door, or via a car, or via the back door. This is called a box formation. Very simplistic and one of the basics, but as you can see, it usually takes at least four agents. Another component would be a bubble, where you're going to have some outer ring of surveillance operatives that are either working in concert with your inner ring that can cover in case the individual starts to move. One of the challenges when following someone on a foot surveillance is their ability to very quickly change direction or turn the corners. You'll see very shortly that this gentleman's going to make a hard right and completely vanishes out of sight. You have to have resources ahead of him to be able to know where he's going. Chalk, that shows that's a signal to your agent that you, have, for example, have left something at a dead drop. So when you turn that quickly, unless I have people ahead of you, I don't know where you're going. You have to be able to anticipate the direction that you're traveling in and get resources ahead of you. You have to be able to know and cover all contingency routes. So if you think about the complexity of this, you come out of any, you come door. Out of, come out of any door, the back door, the front door. So you have to have people on the street covering in a bubble or in a box from a formation standpoint, being able to pick him up at a moment's notice the moment he starts to move. Is he going to go by car, taxi, bus, subway, or is he going to walk? This becomes a very, very labor-intensive endeavor. So uh, especially if you don't want him to know that you're surveilling him. Plus, just like we're hanging out here on the corner, you have to have enough people deployed to be able to look very natural in the environment that they're in. In many ways, a city like New York gives you better cover for that because there's always people milling about or reading a newspaper or sitting on a park bench. But if you take a, a deserted city street like we're dealing with here, it becomes very difficult for just you and I to hang around on this corner for a couple hours. People, if they look out their windows, are going to want to know, what are these people doing? So most people have no understanding of the complexity that it takes to surveil a terrorist target like this. There's a lot of moving pieces. It takes a tremendous amount of resources. It takes a lot of logistical and command and control capabilities. And most people have no idea that surveillances like this are occurring every day on the streets of America, especially in New York City. I'm Fred Burton at Stratfor.